sometimes the most overlooked thing when creating an artwork is reference. There is good reference and there is bad reference. And of course, there is no reference. How and when to use any of these three referencing methods and a little more is what I'll be explaining in the next few minutes. Let's start with the most common method of referencing materials. It's creating a study. It means that you take a picture, commonly just one, but it can be multiple. And with that picture, you just replicate what you see. This is one of the best ways to learn to draw various things from various angles, especially the human body, like anatomy and all that. It's best learned by practicing it, after going through the theory a couple of times. Making a study is a good way to improve overall, but it's not what we are here for. So let's get on with a little less common way to use reference. It's called inspirational reference. You want to draw a dragon, for example, and your reference is a car. Sounds pretty stupid, but look at what this skilled artist could make with it. It's pretty awesome if you ask me. Inspirational reference is when you know your subject, but you want to make it look like something different. As in the example from before, a dragon that resembles a car. You search for car reference mainly and just dip a few pictures of dragons in to not fuck up your dragon anatomy completely. This way of referencing is pretty advanced, since you gotta have a good visual library for the things you want to draw without the reference. And then you gotta make it look like the thing you have in your reference folder. Pretty hard, so don't be disappointed when it doesn't work on the first try. Now let's go back to a little more common ground when it comes to us artists and references. I'm talking about a no references, just your imagination. And a very good rule to keep in mind is that if you're an aspiring artist, that this method should only be used when you have to make a drawing while being held at gunpoint by a crazy art critic. And since that is pretty much never going to happen, you might have already guessed it. That means you should never use this reference technique. It's easily the hardest thing you can do. Because let's be honest, you can't draw something you don't know in and out. If I ask you to draw a sphere, most likely you don't have much problems doing that without reference. That is because you know what a sphere is, as in you know exactly how it looks and how it's shaded. But can you say you know the human anatomy in the same way as you do a sphere? Probably not. That is why using reference is such a big deal. And using no reference is, is plainly said very stupid. I know there are many that say using reference is kind of cheating, but all artists use reference. And the better the artist, the more reference he is going to use. With that said, let's get to the last but not least kind of reference gathering. In my humble opinion, the best way of reference gathering. I mean intricately researched and organized reference. This is what you do when you want to make something new and cool. You want to make something out of many other things. You have a ton of reference pictures in various folders. And with all of the reference you have, you can put it all together into one cool artwork. Because then drawing something isn't so scary anymore. Because you can basically look up everything you need. This method of referencing, which is used by many professionals by the way, is when you just put multiple reference pictures from absolutely different things from various things together in order to create one cool artwork. And I'm not talking about two or three different pictures. I'm talking 50 to 100, if not more. This is the method you want to go with if you want to make a big artwork, one that takes you hours upon hours to draw. Because with this method, you're basically ensuring that it's going to look good. I'll run you through a little example here. You research your idea and get reference for anything you could use during the design process. Let's say I want to make a chair. Pretty boring. How could I find 50 plus pictures of reference for a single chair? Well, I would categorize them probably like this. A few pictures with materials I'd like on my chair. Something like wood, metal, worn metal, rust, maybe glass. Just anything that I'd like to be on it as texture references. Then I would research at least 20 different kinds of chairs, maybe even couches and then stools to take inspiration from. At least 10 pictures of whatever I'd like the chair to resemble. Let's say I want to make a chair that looks like a tree. So I research trees, many kinds of trees, species, ages, to find one I like. And then 10 more pictures of the kind of tree that I like in different seasons. Last but not least, reference for lighting to see how light hits certain shapes and certain textures. And with all that, 
we are easily over 50 pictures into the referencing game, which is a good thing, because we're making a chair, which is about as boring as it can get. And having good and much reference pictures to go back to when you're stuck at something is about a third of your work done as an artist. And having bad reference means that your end product will come out badly as well. You can only get as far as your tools let you. And references are kind of a double-edged sword, but they are a powerful tool and I would use them all the time. So if you're still here after this boring lecture about references and whatever, congratulations. You're a patient artist and I bless you with good art for the next week. Don't let it go to waste. I only give out so many of my blessings. With that said, happy drawing. And until next time.